Welcome to another blackmoney.com video hosted by Space Black. I know it's been a very long time since I made a video. I apologize. Anyway, I'm back. In this video, we'll be walking through the initial steps needed to create your own generative NFTs. First, Space, what's an NFT? Well, if you've been away from the planet for the last few years, NFT is short for non-fungible token. A non-fungible token is essentially a digital asset. This can represent a wide range of things, including intellectual properties. Today, we're just talking about art. Each one of our unique generative NFTs will grant its future owner commercial rights to its likeness and can be traded at that owner's discretion. We can even have secondary market sales pay royalties back to the project creators. As a designer, I love this capability, but we'll speak about that later. This is an example of what we'll be making. This is my Noobs Only Leisure Club NFT that I'll be dropping in less than a month on February 22nd. In this collection, I have 4,444 NFTs at the price of 0.222 sold. Did I draw each one by hand? No. Each Noobs NFT is created from multiple layers. A background, body, hair, clothing, beard, mouth, and eyes. This demo only shows you my methods and is not intended to put you in a box. You are only limited by your imagination. For my step one, I personally sketch on paper prior to doing most projects. Doesn't have to be anything fancy, a napkin, an envelope, a pizza box, whatever. This is just a visual reference I make for myself. It helps me rough out and refine ideas before going digital. I now have my idea and my napkin sketch, so let's get started. Today we're using Adobe Illustrator. If you don't have access to Illustrator for this tutorial, you can download the trial version from the Adobe website or an open source alternative such as Inkscape. I'll leave non-affiliate links below. Once we have Illustrator open, we need to create a file. You can use the Create New button, File menu, or shortcut keys to create a new file. Use the width and height fields to set the size of your NFT in pixels. PFPs are square so both sizes must match. For the sake of this demo, I'm using 1000 by 1000 pixels. Keep in mind that pixel size heavily impacts the file size. The bigger the file, the more it costs to store. You can set your number of artboards here, but remember you can add or subtract artboards as needed once the file has been created. I'll leave the rest of these settings as is and click create. The file opens evenly spaced. We'll use each of the artboards for one of our traits. Let's take a look at the full set of traits for my noobs project. Here we have 300 traits on individually named artboards. When exported, these artboard names will become the corresponding file names for each of our traits. Let's go back to the new file. We can zoom in on a selected artboard by clicking Command and Zero. You can use a paintbrush or the pen tool to draw your image. You can also use the direct select tool to alter the Bezier curves like so. Or the smooth or pencil tool to correct lines. Strokes and fills can be changed using the top menu. If we copy and paste in place on another artboard, we can create variations of the same shapes like so. This is the same technique I used on my news project. Here I am grouping the shapes that make up the news body. Command G. Now I can paste the same shape on multiple artboards and alter them as I see fit. I also like to use the body shape as the overall guide. This helps me easily align the other traits. I usually create a new illustrator layer and paste the body shape on the first artboard and add rectangles to indicate where I want to keep the mouth and eyes. You can do this any way you want, I just use rectangles for this project. I then select all, group the shapes, copy, and paste on all artboards. Now I have a guide layer that I can lock and use to align each new trait that I create. We just have to remember to use the eye icon to hide this layer prior to exporting our traits. Now we have our demo traits created and organized. We need to make sure they're all named in the artboards tab. If you don't see it visible to the right, you can go up to the windows menu, 
and scroll down until you see artboards and click. Now the artboard should be on the right side. If you need to rename one, just double click and type the new name in the field. You can click escape, make sure they're all properly named, and then you're ready to export. To export our traces PNGs, we're gonna use the file menu to scroll down to export and select the export for screens option. We need to make sure we select all desired artboards, choose a location for export, and click export artboard. We now have all of our PNG traits exported in the 1X folder. We need all of these files for the next phase. Now that we have our trait PNGs exported, we need to organize them for the next step. Let's create a folder on the desktop to house our artwork. Inside that folder, we're making a folder for each rarity level. I'm only using four for this demo, but it's your preference. I also like numbering my folders to make it easier when configuring the art generator. Let's group this folder structure into a new folder and name it after our first trait layer. The structure for each trait folder needs to be identical, so I'll copy and paste this file six more times, naming each one after one of my NFT trait layers. Now we can expand our new artwork folder and move the artwork from the previous step into the appropriate folders by trait layer and rarity. Now that we have our artwork organized, we will be using Apsis to generate our finished artwork. Navigate to nft.apsis.co.uk. The link will be below. Click on your operating system to download the app. Once the download is finished, follow your normal installation methods. This will vary based on your operating system and settings. On my Mac, I double click the DMG and drag the app to the application folder. Now let's launch Apsis NFT Art Generator. Beneath config, use the select input folder to choose our artwork folder. If your folder is set up properly, you should automatically see a random version of your NFT. Now let's tweak our settings. You should now see that each of our trait layer folders have imported in numerical order. If these are not the correct order, you can drag them up and down to correct the layers. Remember, one is the lowest layer and each following number stacks on top of the previous. We can change our global rarity setting however we want, as long as it equals 100%. Trait layers, on the other hand, don't have to equal 100%. Most of my layers are present in every NFT with the exception of hair and beards. We can adjust our collection size here under number of NFTs. Most collections have about 10,000, but for this demo, I'm only doing 100. Now let's click the cog icon to change the more crucial metadata settings for our NFTs. First, use the blockchain dropdown to choose your intended chain. Noobs are on Solana, so that's what I choose. Art base name is the prefix of your NFT. Description describes your overall NFT. Some projects put web addresses or slogans here. Creator wallet address is where all royalties are sent. This can be updated prior to moving on chain from multiple creators. Royalty fee is the amount of each secondary market sale that will get sent back to the creator's wallet. Collection describes this incremental NFT release. And finally, symbol is used to identify your token. We can now click generate NFTs, wait a few moments depending on the collection size, and then we'll have an output folder on the desktop that contains an image file for each NFT and a corresponding metadata file. Done. That completes our art prep. If you've enjoyed this content, like, share, and subscribe for free. If you want to support the NFT project, join the Discord and get involved. Until next time, peace.